Would Matthew van der Poel be able to keep the yellow jersey after the Stage 5 ITT in this year's Tour de France? A reminder of the GC standings, he was 8 seconds ahead of Alaphilippe, 31 seconds ahead of Wout perhaps the biggest threat to take it off him, and 39 seconds ahead of Pogaccia going into the stage, which was about 27.2 kilometres of rolling course, over 300 metres of climbing, and a few of the big names had question marks hanging over their head. Geraint Thomas, he'd crashed already. How would he fare with the dislocated shoulder? Roglic crashed as well. With You'd seen how much of his skin was banged up. Wout van Aert, preparation affected by his appendectomy. Matthew van der Poel, apparently they spent all night getting his TT bike and set up ready because he's never really focused on it too much before. But UAE, they've got Mikael Björk, the three-time under-20 world champion in the TT. He went into the hot seat early with a time of 33 minutes and one second, which was a good time for sure, but his teammate, Brandon McNulty, another good TT on UAE, he crashed heavily. He nearly missed the time cut on this TT. Very banged up, something to watch for UAE team Emirates, a man that was going to be very important for Pogaccia in later stages of this Tour de France. But quick step, Matteo Cataneo still improving. He's in his late 20s, but he did a really good TT, 32 minutes and 55 Five, five seconds quicker than Mikael Björk, solidly in the top 10. But before long, it was time for the big guns. Stefan Kung riding off the wave of Switzerland's Euros result. One of the big favourites for the stage, his Swiss compatriot Bissiger had fallen foul of the weather, so he was out of contention. Now, Kung's never won a Grand Tour stage or TT. He's done really well at Romedy TTs, Bink Bank and Swiss earlier, but he set a really good time here, 32 minutes and 18 seconds, and he was going to be in the hot seat for a long time. By this time, we started to see the GC contenders warming up. How would Roglic go? Would he be able to limit his losses to Pogaccia, given how banged up he's been? Matthew van der Poel looking relaxed, but I want to really focus on Jonas Wingergaard, the Dane. Now, if you don't watch too much cycling, you might not have heard of him before, but if you've been following closely, particularly in the Vuelta last year, he was super strong for Jumbo Visma in the mountains, and his TT has been killer this year. In fact, Jumbo Visma have done a fantastic job with all their riders' TTs, really. Afini, Foss, Wingergaard, Roglic this year, and Wingergaard was flying. At the Dauphiné, he did a really good time trial, but his climbing wasn't as good. He had an Achilles problem or something, and he'd just come off altitude, but here he finished eight seconds behind Stefan Kung. A crazy good performance for him. And then we were watching with bated breath, how would Primoz Roglic do? I don't think I could have aired to watch if you know Roglic lost like two, three minutes today. But we knew by the first intermediate, he was on. He lost only like four seconds to Kung. And at the finish line, he set a time of 32 44, which is really solid. Now, it's 17 behind Wingergaard. Don't get me wrong, I'd expect him to beat Wingergaard normally, but given he lost half the skin on his side and he's crashed twice already, Jumbo Visma and Roglic have got to be really happy with where Roglic finished, and he is still in the fight for GC at this year's Tour de France. Less happy would probably be Geraint Thomas. We didn't see any cameras of him, actually, except for the static cameras. He set a time of 33.18, so losing rather than gaining time on the other GC contenders, and he was visibly unhappy at the finish. Wout van Aert as well. Now his preparation been affected, but he set a time that maybe he'd be expecting to do a little bit better than 32-30. Three seconds slower than his teammate Jonas Wingergaard. But it's time for Tane Pogaccia to roll off the ramp. We saw him stage 20 last year. I'm sure you'll remember that, winning that stage. And he actually should have been docked a second here. He rolled out early, sort of broke through the commissaire's finger that he was holding up. But anyway, he was flying from the get-go, Pogaccio. We knew by the first intermediate time check where he was 11 seconds quicker than Stefan Kung. A little slightly uphill. I was like, oh, has he gone hard on the uphill section and then he'll lose to Kung and Wingergaard on the false flat downhill drag? He didn't. He kept extending that gap, and at T2, he was 17 seconds ahead of Kung and 22 seconds ahead of Jonas Wingergaard. And at that point, with 10 minutes of TTing left, unless he completely blew up on the run into the finish or had a mechanical arm crash, and Kung knew that too, he was going to be taking out this stage. He even took the corners pretty gingerly, to be honest, when you compare to how Matthew van der Poel railed through them in the last kilometre. But Pogaccia beat Kung's time by 18 seconds, setting a time of 32 minutes flat, almost a crazy TT performance from Pogaccia again, who'd lost to Roglic in the Basque TT, but he'd done a really good flat Terreno TT, also disappointed like Kung was Richard Carapaz, who, listen, we weren't expecting big things from him either, but setting a time of 33.44. Richie Port as well, I mean, 
He did a really good TT, a top 10 stage performance, 32.55, but he's still losing 55 seconds to Tadej Pogacar because that's how crazy Pogacar's performance was, that it was even putting Matthew Van Der Poel's yellow jersey under threat. Not from Juan Van Aert, who was 31 behind on GC from Van Der Poel. Pogacar was 39 seconds behind him, remember, on GC, and Van Der Poel did the TT of his life. He said... I had one of my best days on the bike ever. They're up to like midnight or something, I think I already said, setting up his bike and his position. He's in an unbranded, now uncursed laser TT helmet because Roglic uncursed it. And Van der Poel saved his yellow jersey, perhaps because he railed all these corners so well in the finale, almost easily in the end, just about doing the same time as Wout van Aert, 32-31. And it just goes to show how talented Van der Poel is. Now, he came fifth in the Bing Bang Tour TT last year, but it wasn't as long as this one and the stakes certainly were not as high and he's whipped out a top five stage performance when his TT bike certainly won't have been his focus this year. Yeah I surprised myself today. Um, I think I have to thank the team. We worked until midnight on the bike to get the position uh, a bit better to save some watts and yeah I think I had one of my best days on the bike. Um, I was able to push myself beyond limits today and yeah, I'm su super proud of myself and the team. When I said yesterday that I was, that I thought I, I'd lose the jersey today was not a lie. I mean, <laughs> it's not my specialty and I think, yeah, I just, um, I've outdone myself today. But the big story was Tali Pogacar both winning the stage and extending his GC gap on literally everybody. 19 seconds ahead of Stefan Kung on the stage, 27 ahead of Wingergold, 30 and 31 ahead of Van Aert and Van der Poel. Good performances from Asger in 37 seconds, then Roglic, Katanea Port, and Alexei Lutschenko. Just remember, one minute back, just like his Dauphiné TT, it was really good performance again from him today. So watch out for Astana on GC. They've got Lutschenko and Fulsang pretty close. But Van der Poel keeps the yellow jersey. He'll keep it after stage six tomorrow normally as well. Eight seconds ahead of Pogacar, 30 seconds ahead of Van Aert. Rigoberto Uran did a consistent TT, and he's a minute 21 behind Tadej Pogacar. But Vingegaard, Carapaz, and Roglic are all about a minute 40 behind Tadej Pogacar. Port's like four minutes behind. Thomas is, I think, over two minutes behind. And at this point, surely, one would expect Jumbo Visma to be using Jonas Vingegaard as a second GC threat or a co-leader alongside Roglic. Pagacha already has such a big lead that they'll need to be aggressive, try things out of the box. We saw the combination of Vingegaard and Roglic put Pagacha and his weaker team overall under pressure. But we discussed all the GC ramifications and what we expect in the future and what stages Yumbo could target in the future on the Lantern Roof Cycling Podcast today. It comes out earlier and we get right into the detail. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it down below if you did. We'll have the Stage 6 recap tomorrow. Should be a bunch sprint. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.